Smart Guy is a television sitcom that revolves around the adventures of a youngster transitioning from elementary fourth grade to high school tenth grade, sharing classes with siblings. The creation of Danny Callis, the show enjoyed a three-season run on the WB Network from 1997 to May 1999, delivering a total of 51 captivating episodes. Produced by The Pass Entertainment and Danny Callis Production, Closely associated with Walt Disney Television, the sitcom earned seven award nominations. Even years later, it stands out as one of the finest family sitcoms of its era. The ensemble cast of the television sitcom Smart Guy featured various members. In this video, we'll highlight some of the cast members who have sadly passed away. On our channel, we showcase content of this nature so be sure to show your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing for more. Naya Rivera Naya Rivera is a familiar face in the world of sitcoms, having been part of the cast of Smart Guy. Rivera played a dual role, portraying both Kelly and Tanya, and made appearances in two episodes of the sitcom in 1997 and 1999. In July 2020, Tragedy struck as Naya went missing on Lake Peru, situated 60 miles north of Los Angeles, during an outing with her son, Josie. The four-year-old was discovered alone and asleep on a rented boat around 5 p.m. local time, with Naya nowhere to be found. Josie informed authorities that his mother had jumped into the water but didn't come back up, as reported by TMZ. Rivera's body was eventually found on July 13, 2020 floating near the lake's surface, five days after disappearing underwater. Naya began her career early, featuring in Kamart commercials as a baby. Her significant acting debut occurred at the age of four when she played Hilary Winston on the CBS sitcom The Royal Family in 1991. Despite being unable to read scripts at that age, she developed a remarkable skill for learning lines through recitation and memorization, a talent that stayed with her throughout her career. In 2009, Rivera landed the role of Santana Lopez, a high school cheerleader, on Fox's musical comedy series Glee. Her audition was fueled by the desire to sing, dance, and act all in the same show, and her admiration for co-creator Ryan Murphy's past work on Nip Tuck. Channeling her own high school experiences of unpopularity, Rivera drew inspiration from films like Mean Girls to authentically embody the character of a bitchy sophomore. As the first season progressed, Rivera's screen time and musical involvement expanded, leading to her promotion as a series regular from the beginning of the second season. Her magnetism on screen was deemed undeniable, earning her this well-deserved position. Rivera showcased her vocal prowess with her first solo performance in the fifth episode of season two, The Rocky Horror Glee Show, and continued to impress with subsequent performances. In her personal life, Rivera dated actor Taj Maori from 2000 to 2004, a relationship that began when they first met, shooting a commercial when Rivera was just four years old. They also worked together on Smart Guy in the 1990s. Rivera maintained a close relationship with Todd and his family, particularly sisters Tia and Tamara Maori, extending support even during challenging times, such as helping them find an apartment when they faced eviction. Additionally, she made a notable appearance on Tia Maori at home in 2017. In January 2015, while serving as a guest host on The View, Rivera hinted at her potential bisexuality. During the episode, Rosie O'Donnell discussed a study revealing higher mental health challenges among bisexual women compared to lesbians. Rivera responded with humor, saying to Rosie, No wonder I'm crazy. This just solves it all. Esquire noted in the aftermath of her passing that Rivera never publicly disclosed her actual sexuality. Gay Times recognized both her and her character Santana, listing them among cherished LGBTQ plus characters portrayed by LGBTQ plus actors. Rivera delved into her religious beliefs in her memoir, identifying as a lifelong Christian. 
Her mother experienced a deeply religious phase during Rivera's childhood, restricting her and her brother to exclusively listen to Christian music from the age of seven to her teenage years. She fondly recalls performing Christian songs in junior high school talent shows, even if they didn't really bring the house down. Rivera's family, including her mother, displayed no reservations about her lesbian storyline on Glee. Rivera emphasized her mother's non-judgmental and open-minded nature, stating that her mother is the most non-judgmental, cool person. Jennifer Lyons Jennifer Lyons portrayed the character Celia in the sitcom. As a participant on Survivor, Palau, the blonde and charming nanny, Jen Lyon, relied on her intelligence and engaging personality to endure 37 out of 39 days, ultimately securing the fourth position. While the grand prize eluded her, she gained a lifetime of friendships, a valuable reward that brought solace during her five-year battle with breast cancer, a fight that concluded on Tuesday when Lyon passed away at the age of 37. Hailing from Nevada, Jennifer Lyon grew up in Washington and Oregon. She spent a year in Spain as a foreign exchange student and two years in London working as a nanny. In Oregon, she attended Portland State University for approximately one year before transferring to Western Oregon State College and eventually Oregon State University, where she earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Nutrition and Food Management. Currently, she is pursuing her master's degree in the School of Family Consumer Sciences at California State University, Northridge. Continuing her work as a nanny in the Los Angeles area, Lyon is also a part-time photographer. With past roles as a nutrition counselor, preschool teacher, and photographer's assistant, she describes herself as good-natured, easygoing, and opinionated. Lyon takes pleasure in activities like hiking, soccer, and photography, and she takes pride in having learned Spanish during her foreign exchange program at the age of 18. In the final days before her passing, Lyon was surrounded by friends and family at the Survivor 10-year anniversary party in Los Angeles. Probst recalled, She looked absolutely stunning that night. Certainly a lot of that is because Jen was always a beautiful woman, but there was a spirit inside her that was palpable. It was clear to me that she knew this was a goodbye. Sister Kim deemed it a fitting tribute, stating, Jen would rather go to a survivor party than anything else. No matter how bad she was feeling, she could always rally for that kind of celebration. Rosenberger observed, People couldn't help themselves but be drawn to her, and you always felt a little bit warmer inside when she was around. When she found out she was sick, that didn't change. So many people are dying of cancer. Jen showed everyone how to live because of it. In 2005, residing in Encino, California, Lyon received a diagnosis of stage 3 breast cancer, prompting her to commence a blog chronicling her journey through the disease and its treatment. Lyon actively engaged with the Me and My Two Friends Foundation, an organization dedicated to promoting early detection and prevention of breast cancer through education and awareness initiatives. The foundation was established by Alisa Unger, a jewelry designer committed to contributing a portion of proceeds to support breast cancer education projects. In 2006, Lyon served as the Grand Marshal for the 11th Annual Walk for the Cause, a breast cancer fundraising event in Albany, Oregon. By December 2009, Lyon, along with her boyfriend Dion, parents Larry and Jane Lyon, and nephews Tyler Lyon and Meikle Lyon, launched a Christmas tree lot and directed all profits towards the Susan Love Cancer Research Foundation. Subsequently, in January, she relocated to a spot on the Hood River in Oregon. Esther Scott Esther Scott stands out as a prominent figure in black history, serving as an inspiration to young individuals, encouraging them to pursue their aspirations. She made a guest appearance in the sitcom Smart Guy, portraying the character Verla Mae Tibbs in an episode dating back to 1998. Esther Scott 
renowned for her contributions to film, television, and stage productions, including roles in Nate Parker's The Birth of a Nation and John Singleton's Boys and the Hood, passed away on February 14th in Los Angeles after experiencing a heart attack. She was 66. Scott graced numerous TV series, assuming the role of Delma on CW's Heart of Dixie, and appearing in shows such as CBS's The Help, Fox's Melrose Place, and ABC's The Gina Davis Show, and Sister, Sister, among others. Her initial foray into the entertainment world involved providing the voice for a character in the animated Star Wars series Ewoks during the mid-1980s. Her filmography boasts credits in Gangster Squad, Transformers, The Pursuit of Happiness, Dreamgirls, 2005's Fun with Dick and Jane, Austin Powers in Gold Member the Craft, Don Juan DeMarco, and Common Threads' Stories from the Quilt. In the iconic Boys in the Hood, she portrayed a grandmother who almost caught Cuba Gooding Jr.'s tray engaging with her granddaughter, wielding a meat cleaver as she hurried up the stairs, just missing Trey, who had leaped out the window. Scott assumed the role of Nat Turner's grandmother, Bridget, in The Birth of a Nation, Parker's acclaimed drama that garnered attention at the 2016 Sundance Film Festival. Her engagement extended to the theater, with notable appearances in productions like Jump at the Sun in 2001 with L.A. Theater Works. Additionally, she collaborated with the East-West Players, Po' Boy Tango, The Fountain Theater, Going to St. Ives and To Be Young, Gifted and Black, and the Actors Theater of Louisville, Devotees in the Garden of Love and Marisol. Andre Rosie Brown Andre Rosie Brown, another actor from the sitcom Smart Guy, has sadly passed away in real life. Brown was most recognized by fans of the show for his role as Mr. Jerome, featured in a single episode in 1998. Tragically, on July 18, 2006, Brown succumbed to a brief illness in Northridge, California, at the age of 50. Born in Rockford, Illinois, Brown initially served as a police officer for the Inglewood Police Department before transitioning to an acting career. He attended Rocky Mountain College, where he balanced playing football with earning a living as a jazz drummer. His law enforcement career spanned stints in Seattle and Los Angeles. Brown's television debut occurred in 1985 with a role in the police procedural series Hill Street Blues, portraying a wrestler on television. His entry into film took place in the television film The Return of Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer, where he landed the role of the formidable big black man in 1986. In 1998, Brown retired from his 14-year tenure with the Inglewood Police Department, marking the end of his law enforcement career. Post-retirement, he continued to pursue roles in film and television. Throughout the 1990s and 2000s, Brown made guest appearances in various film and television productions, including Designing Women, Caddyshack 2, Throw Mama from the Train, Night Court, The Golden Girls, What's Happening Now, Canadian Bacon, Full House, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Frasier, Meet Wally Sparks, Dave's World, The Drew Carey Show, Friends, Back in Business, Matlock, Off the Mark, Class Act, Daddy Dearest, Barb Wire, Car 54, Where Are You? Step by Step, Naked Gun, 33 plus 1 to 3, The Final Insult, ER, The Wayans Brothers, Catfish and Black Bean Sauce, Money Talks, The Jamie Foxx Show, Martin Pros and Cons, Big Fat Liar, Space Jam, and Forget Paris. Additionally, he assumed the lead role of Morgan Washington in the crime television drama series Forma 13 Hope Saint, appearing in eight episodes. Brown retired from acting in 2002 with his final appearance in the film Devious Beings. Len Lesser. Len Lesser, fondly recognized as Sidney by enthusiasts of the series, made a singular appearance in 1998. The esteemed American actor who passed away at 88 due to pneumonia following a two-year battle with cancer, garnered a devoted following for his portrayal of Uncle Leo in the distinctive sitcom Seinfeld. He became renowned for his spirited Jerry, Hello, salutation to his on-screen nephew.
Uncle Leo, an elderly character fixated on greetings, insisted that Jerry always respond with a cheerful, Hello? Regardless of the awkwardness of the situation. This demand persisted even when Jerry caught Leo shoplifting at a bookshop, with Leo sternly advising, you still say hello. Seinfeld achieved both popular and critical acclaim for its insightful take on life and its departure from conventional sitcom norms, opting for fewer tidy resolutions. Recognized by TV Guide as the greatest television program of all time, it bestowed upon Lesser a lifetime association with fans exclaiming, Uncle Leo, wherever he went. In his extensive 60-year television career, Lesser also endeared himself to audiences as Garvin, 1996-2004, a friend of the titular character's father in the sitcom Everybody Loves Raymond. Once again, Lesser's character established a catchphrase with his habitual exclamation. Hey, Ray's here, a native of the East Bronx in New York, Lesser commenced his acting journey at the Juvenile House Community Center at the age of 16. Reflecting on his early years, he remarked, Acting opened up a whole new world of expression for me, as I was quite shy and inarticulate, and the applause and attention was really heady. He pursued studies in economics and government at the City College of New York, and upon graduating in 1942, he served in the Army during World War II. His military service took him to China, Burma, and India, where he rose to the rank of sergeant. After his discharge in 1946, Lesser returned to New York with aspirations of establishing a career on the stage. Determined to pursue this path, he enrolled at the American Theater Wing, which had recently inaugurated an acting school tailored for war veterans. His initiation into the professional realm began as an extra, with the then New York City Center Opera Company, presently recognized as the New York City Opera, earning $2 per performance. In his third season, he ascended to a leadership role, overseeing all extras and securing a five-fold increase in his remuneration. Spanning the subsequent 55 years, Lesser assumed over 100 characters on television, showcasing his adaptability by seamlessly transitioning between dramatic and comedic roles. He took on multiple roles in series like The Red Skelton Show, 1959-62, Get Smart, 1965-67, My Favorite Martian, 1965-66, The Monkees, 1966-67, Bonanza, 1970-72, and Kojak, 1974. Lesser's cinematic repertoire included bit parts in numerous feature films, sharing the screen with luminaries such as Steve McQueen in Papillon, 1973, and Clint Eastwood in both Kelly's Heroes, 1970, and the outlaw Josie Wales, 1976. His final on-screen appearance, at the age of 87, transpired in an episode of the television crime series Castle, 2009. In the preceding year, he portrayed the sagacious grandfather in Clifford Odets's Depression-era play, Awake and Sing, with the Southern California Classical Repertory Theater Company, A Noise Within. A discerning critic noted, Lesser nearly steals the show several times. Following a divorce from his wife, Jan Burrell, in 1982, after 28 years of marriage, he is survived by their son, David, daughter, Michelle, and three grandchildren. Thank you so much for joining us on this incredible journey today. Your time and attention mean the world to us. If you enjoyed what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. We love hearing from you, so leave your thoughts, comments, or suggestions down below. We read every single one. Stay tuned for upcoming videos, behind-the-scenes exclusives, and maybe even some sneak peeks. Remember, the adventure doesn't end here. It's just the beginning. So until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep being awesome. Thanks again, and see you in the next video.